So, how you interpret your experience is rather important. When your expectations are frustrated, will you accept the correction, or will you insist that you are being unfairly treated? Are you the victim of what happens to you, or the one who uses it for learning? Are you receiving your experience as a blessing or as a punishment? That is the question you must constantly ask yourself. Every experience is an opportunity to embrace truth and reject illusion. One experience is not better or worse than another in this respect. All experiences are equally potent. They exist only as a birthing ground for your divinity. That is why you must never despair. You will always have another chance to change your mind. Don't listen to those who would tell you otherwise. There is no final judgment except for the judgment you will make about yourself when you see yourself through my eyes. Perhaps in this moment you do not believe me. Perhaps you are convinced that you have caused the suffering of others or that you are the victim of their actions toward you. Just because you reject my words now does not mean that I will cease to offer them to you. Why should it matter to me how long it takes for you to wake up? Certainly, time is not an issue for me, nor is it for you if truth were told. You have plenty of time to make mistakes and learn from them. When every one of you has learned what you have come to learn, this world will no longer be necessary. This physical universe, which seems so permanent to you, will dissolve into nothingness. For once you are awake, it will serve no purpose. That time is coming, yet there is no rush. Don't push the river. Don't try to hold it back. It won't do you any good. The divine mind is at work in your mind right here, right now. In this you must learn to trust. The need for miracles. Miracles are demonstrations of the divine mind in action within your mind and experience. Miracles are needed as teaching devices, just as they were 2,000 years ago. Every miracle is a demonstration of the fact that love is stronger than fear. Do not underestimate the degree to which your world is created out of fear. Look around you. Look at your own thoughts. Is there any place where fear does not have a foothold? I don't ask you to do this to depress you. I would just have you be realistic. See things as they are in your world. Take an inventory of your own thoughts. You cannot come to love unless you realize how much of your thinking is fear-based. Bringing awareness to your fearful thoughts introduces the possibility of an alternative. But please do not try to replace negative fearful thoughts with positive loving thoughts. This just sets up conflict in your mind. Instead, let awareness work. Simply be aware of your fear and feel it. Then, when you have felt it fully, simply say, I am ready to move through my fear now, Father. Please help me. And be willing to receive the help you ask for. Your request will not be turned down, I assure you. When you ask for help, you acknowledge that there is a power that is greater than your fear. You also indicate your desire to work with that power to move out of fear and conflict in your life. There is one more suggestion I would make. When you ask for help, recognize that you are asking that your thoughts be changed. So affirm this, Father, I am willing to change my mind about this situation. Please help me see this, not through the eyes of fear, but as you see it. Help me see this with equal love for myself and all others. This, my brother, is a powerful prayer. Stay with it. Rest in its strength and its peace. And let God answer you in every word, every gesture, and every action. 
You cannot experience the miracle unless you are willing to receive it. To experience the miracle, the following factors must be present. Number one, you must know that you need it. Number two, you must ask for it in sincerity. Number three, you must be willing to receive it. When all three factors are present, the miracle will manifest. Unfortunately, even if the miracle has manifested in your life, you may not know it. Why is this? Because you have a preconception of what the miracle is supposed to look like. So even though it is sitting right next to you, you might not recognize it. What good is a miracle if you can't find it? If you would accept the miracle into your heart, please understand that it might not look like you thought it would. Be open to its presence in your life and allow it to re reveal itself to you. Some of you may ask, why doesn't God give me the miracle I ask for? That is because the miracle you ask for may not free you from your fear. Therefore, it is not miraculous, and your fear will just recreate the condition that necessitated the demonstration you asked for. Let God be the one to answer your prayer. Do not try to tell him what you need. He knows better than you do. Trust in that. Open to his presence in your life. Be willing to learn from him and of him. In that willingness, fear will be dissolved. In that willingness, you will awaken to your true nature. Using what is there. You do not have to reinvent the wheel in order to make a meaningful contribution in life. If you look around, you will see many avenues for self-expression. None of these are perfect. Some will requ require you to adapt. That is okay. It is good to be adaptable. It is good to understand that the same thing can be said and done in many ways. If you are trying to find the perfect form, the perfect job, the perfect relationship, you will be continually frustrated. The world does not offer perfection in this respect. It simply offers you an opportunity to grow and to change, which is not hard if you are not attached to the form of your expression. Use the form that is available to you at the time. Let go of your preconceptions. Each moment is new. Each situation asks something different from you. The attachment to saying or doing something in a particular way is time-bound. Such attachments keep you chained to the past. They keep you fixed in a false identity. Every experience that comes your way will ask you if you are willing to let go, if you are willing to trust, if you are willing to step out of time. If you are not attached to form, it is easy to easy to step out of time. Your focus remains in the present, in the eternal now. Whatever occurs demands your total attention. Yet how many of you are fully present in your experience? Most of you are busy judging your experience, finding fault with it, wishing that it looked as you expected it to look. In other words, you are holding on to your false identity. You are trying to make the present conform to the past. Ask yourself honestly, are you looking for a steady, predictable life? Is this what you want? If so, you must realize that the world cannot offer you this. Nothing is steady. Nothing is predictable. Nothing will give you anything other than temporary security. Thoughts come and go. Relationships begin and end. Bodies are born and pass away. This is all the world can offer you impermanence, growth, change. Permanence cannot be found at the level of form. All form is in essence a distortion of the original formlessness of the universe. What, it, it, what is all-inclusive, all-accepting, all-loving cannot be limited to form. Love does not choose its beloved or the moment of its expression. Love extends to all at all times. Love is without conditions, that is to say, it is without form.